de, de cet avertissement euh, de l'Inde concernant les ressortissants, est-ce que, comment vous réagissez à ça? Est-ce que c'est un pas vers l'escalade qui est peut-être ben, attendu de la part de ben, Écoutez, moi, je pense que le premier ministre a parlé là-dessus. L'idée, euh, c'est n'est pas d'escalader. Je pense que ce qui avait été dit a été dit, puis ce qu'on s'attend, c'est une coopération de l'Inde euh, dans ce dossier-là. Mais vous comprendrez que c'est je sais, je suis pas mal occupé aussi avec les questions d'épicerie. Donc, euh, j'ai, j'ai suivi. Vous avez vu qu'aujourd'hui, on va recevoir euh, les épiciers indépendants. Le but de, de les recevoir, c'est de les rassurer, parce qu'on a été très clair que ce qu'on veut, c'est, c'est travailler avec les grands pour stabiliser les prix au Canada. Mais aujourd'hui, j'ai aussi parlé au président de l'UPA. C'est important aussi de dire qu'on veut protéger nos fermiers. Mais l'équipe Canada n'est euh, pas trop stressée avec l'aide? L'équipe Canada qui veut y aller, là? Ben, écoutez, je ne peux pas parler en leur nom, mais ce que je peux vous dire, c'est que c'est certainement la donne a changé. Et maintenant, le, le Canada a parlé. Le premier ministre s'est exprimé là-dessus. Maintenant, il euh, ne faut pas escalader, mais il faut avoir une position ferme, évidemment, parce que la majorité... Vous, 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 vous devez revoir votre stratégie. Vous devez revoir votre stratégie avec tout ça. Laquelle, vous voulez dire? Bon, ben, écoutez, la, la ministre Jolie, évidemment, euh, certainement, va réfléchir sur cette question-là. Mais l'idée, c'est de protéger d'abord la santé et la sécurité des gens. Oui. Est-ce que, justement, vous allez beaucoup aborder la stratégie du pacifique et le réalignement dans le Bien, on a beaucoup de choses d'abord. Je, je, j'espère que vous allez être là demain. Je ne veux, veux pas tout dire aujourd'hui parce qu'on reçoit, comme vous avez dit, le ministre de l'Économie japonaise, donc un, un partenaire important. Vous savez, les Japonais font partie de l'écosystème qu'on a bâti dans les véhicules électriques. On aura beaucoup à discuter parce que d'abord, on a, on a des ententes de partenariat signées importantes pour le Canada parce que quand on parle de diversifier nos partenariats, c'est important, surtout avec nos partenaires japonais. Et j'aurai aussi l'occasion de vous parler de, de, cette, de cette idée-là que j'ai de, de solidarité l'appui des collègues à travers le monde, vous savez, sur les grands manufacturiers. Donc, on aura plusieurs sujets à discuter. Mais allez-vous lui demander de condamner, allez-vous lui demander de condamner euh, ce qui se Écoutez, euh, la ministre Jolie fait ce travail-là. Euh, moi, demain, évidemment, la discussion euh, va porter sur les partenariats qu'on développe. Évidemment, on va parler d'épicerie. Puis, certainement que ça va être évoqué durant notre rencontre aussi. Mais, 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 Just, what, what does this mean? What, what will this mean if there's some sort of deal in place? Or, is this about critical minerals? Or well, you're, you're referring about the meeting tomorrow with the Japanese. Well, I think it's an which is the the whole mighty ministry of the economy in Japan is a big sign and at a time where Canada needs to diversify its trading partner. Uh, I think it's, uh, I don't remember on top of my head, but it's probably one of the first time that you have a bilateral visit from the Japanese Ministry of the Economy and it's telling that they're coming here in Canada with a trade delegation to to strengthen uh, the, the business tie between the two. Obviously Japan is a key ally when it comes to the electric vehicle and what we build. And we're going to be uh, also, I'll, I'll be talking to him about this, this, uh, this idea that I said that maybe at the G7 we need to, to push back together on large manufacturers. Um, so that's also going to be part of, of the discussion. Mr. Chairman, the Canada has just for the export. Are you not too exaggerated? We don't have any measures of security. I don't have any measures of security. And as I said, you have seen, I was very much with the pizzeries. Merci de l'envoi. Um, and I think uh, there is a consultation going on uh, currently in Canada uh, to find a way forward, which, which you could, in a way, uh, make sure that at one time we're leading when it comes to, uh, you know, uh, the plastic issue in, in food processing. But at the same time, I talked to Minister Gilbo and the consultation is ongoing. We'll hear from uh, different, um, I would say, stakeholders in that. But really now the point is for them to come back. You know, we gave them homework. They have to come back with a plan a detailed plan to say how we can stabilize prices. Today I'm going to meet with the independent grocers. I'm going to meet also with with the large manufacturers. I think this is happening on Monday now. Uh, so we're keeping the work that we have promised to Canadians. Are you giving them a deadline too that by Thanksgiving they have to also come back with a plan or else could face punitive taxes? Well, that's that's the whole purpose of the meeting we had and their commitment was to come back to me with a detailed plan. No, so the manufacturers, the independent grocers, uh, listen, the other levels. Listen, we've not had the chance to, to talk to them, but trust me, 
the push that I made with the grocer uh, will be very similar to the large manufacturer. Merci. Minister Leblanc. The Canadian people have a trade relationship with India. How will this accusation by Canada impact that? That would be a, a question for the Minister of International Trade. I took note of India's uh, uh, travel advisory. People can read into that what they want. Canada is a safe country. The government of India can explain why they're doing that. Um, what we're doing is ensuring that there's a, an appropriate criminal investigation into these circumstances. And I think that, as we said yesterday, commenting further will prevent the RCMP from doing the important work they have to do. Are they alleged perpetrators believed to be still in Canada? But again, you want that's, I, I get why you're asking the questions. That's a good question to ask the RCMP. I don't know those operational details and I'm not going to answer questions about what the RCMP investigation uh, is looking into. That's properly a question. Should, 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 should India be added to the inquiry into foreign interference? We don't need to add India into the inquiry because in the terms of reference it talks about Russia, China, other state and non-state actors. So, 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 so we, we, we contemplated, we contemplated in the discussions throughout the summer with my opposition colleagues that Commissioner Ugg should be able to follow the evidence and not only focus on those two countries but go to other countries. But again, I, I, I can't speak for Commissioner Ugg. I think she started on Monday. She'll be setting up her inquiry. Uh, but we deliberately designed with the opposition parties uh, an inquiry that could follow the evidence and look at countries other than Russia and China. But it's important to say that the it's important to say uh, that the inquiry is into foreign interference in democratic institutions or federal democratic processes. This isn't. This is. I'm going to stand back. You know, deal. Uh, there's supposed to be this Home Buyers Bill of Rights that's part of this deal. It needs to be done by the end of this year, right? In this session, sitting, I should say. You know, what's what's happening with this? I've heard nothing about it, and it's part of this deal that you guys, uh, you know, propped up. Uh, yeah, look, it, it's it's an important part of the uh, the work that we're doing to uh, to protect homeowners. There's a number of different angles that I think we're uh, seeking to work through right now to establish what the content of such a bill may be. Uh, I'm also trying to figure out what protections we want to make sure uh, are in place for renters across Canada. Of course, there's mixed uh, jurisdiction uh, when it comes to protecting uh, those who uh, have uh, housing needs uh, with provincial governments. How so, far along is it? Like, are you going to get this done by December? Uh, look, my, my indication is that uh, we're, we're still on track, but, but we do have work to do. Uh, as you can appreciate, uh, upon my appointment to the position, uh, my immediate focus was trying to advance programs that are, are going to address the supply challenges that we're having in Canada, uh, but we have to do more than one thing at a time. Uh, so we're going to continue to work with our NDP counterparts, uh, and even when I did have the chance to uh, first engage with my uh, uh, critic with the NDP, there was a, a range of different issues uh, that formed the priority for those conversations, uh, but we're going to continue to work closely with them to develop the content. Of, India uh, today has issued a travel advisory warning its citizens not to come to Canada, saying that there was condoned politically motivated hate crimes, anti-India activity. What do you make of that? Uh, look, as you can appreciate, that's that's certainly not my perspective. Uh, it's unfortunate uh, that we've seen that kind of a response. Uh, but my message right now uh, is not uh, to the uh, Indian governments, it's to Canadians uh, who come uh, uh, oftentimes uh, from uh, South Asian communities. The Indo-Canadian community is an essential part of Canada. We are a country that was built on uh, migration. Uh, if you're not from an indigenous community, you came from somewhere else. And I can tell you right now, the people I'm talking to are hurting. Uh, they don't want to see uh, divisions based on whether you're uh, Sikh, uh, Hindu, or Muslim. Uh, they want to come together as Canadians and promote peaceful dialogue, uh, uh, even in the most difficult conversations. Uh, this is um, obviously a tragedy that played out. Uh, the allegations are extremely serious, and we're going to treat them seriously. But in the meantime, I'd like to promote a sense of calm and respect towards one another. I'll, I'll come back here. Are you concerned that there are other people here in Canada that could be targeted, that you're concerned about their safety right now? And should protection be offered? 
uh, we're, we're always concerned about the safety and well-being of Canadians. Uh, there are not uh, specific threats that I'm aware of currently that are tied to uh, uh, foreign officials, uh, but from a public safety point of view, we want to always protect the safety and well-being of Canadians, whether their family's been here for generations or whether they arrived last month. Le Premier ministre du Québec, juste que... Vous avez participé à l'annonce au printemps concernant le nouveau passeport. Est-ce que c'est exagéré? Nous, on apprend aujourd'hui que ça a coûté 284 millions juste pour refaire les images du passeport. On ne parle même pas des, des, des features de sécurité. Qu'est-ce que vous dites aux Canadiens qui trouvent ça exagéré? OK. J'ai euh, envie de pratiquer français. Ah, you said there's a significant cost for the security and images. $284 million, according to... So one of the things that I think is really, really important is the reason that we renew passport designs in Canada is primarily, primarily to protect the security and integrity of the document. But we're only talking about the images. I thought you said the images and the, and the security features. No. Just uh, the images. Uh, okay. Je n'ai pas le nombre maintenant. Yeah. I think you could probably appreciate that I've, uh, with the new portfolio, I'm coming with different issues front of mind. Uh, I'm happy to follow up with Ms. Ben, justement, sur votre portefeuille, c'est pas le logement de la Premier ministre du Québec, là. Okay, uh, look, I, I'll... Uh, well, look, uh, give me the opportunity to maybe review the figures to make sure that we're talking about, because a lot of the cost baked into the process was to uh, enhance security features, to modernize it, to protect against uh, fraud and integrity, which includes, but is not limited to, uh, changing the images, which make it harder to produce counterfeit documents. Uh, but if, if you'd like, uh, perhaps I can take a look at the figures to make sure I know the specific numbers you're talking about, and next time you catch me through, uh, I'll, I'll do my best to address it. So the Premier Minister of Quebec... And the discussions with the Quebec government yesterday, the minister said, uh, Minister Tsonso said uh, that uh, discussions are stalling for the nine, uh, 900 million dollars because Ottawa is trying to impose conditions. So that is what Quebec government is saying. So, what are you answering to that? Alors, j'ai eu une euh, échange de messages ce matin avec euh, M. de Ranceau. Alors, j'espère que j'ai l'opportunité de, de, de parler avec elle ce soir pour discuter le, 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 le fonds et le, euh, des opportunités pour le Québec. Alors, mais maintenant, euh, j'ai beaucoup d'espoir de, de, euh, parce que le, le, ce n'est pas... Uh, just in conversation through the, the uh, conditions, c'est une conversation de but uh, 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 sur le, uh, la la priorité uh, priorité du, du protégeant uh, en particulier uh, uh, le, le, le raison d'être pour le fond et pour uh, construire des uh, uh, des logements uh, pour le Québec et uh, partout notre pays uh, just in, in English to be a little more certain uh, one of the things that uh, you have to appreciate about this particular fund. It, it is, it's been designed to operate on a, a per unit basis. Uh, so we're happy to engage in conversations about a, a transfer of funds, but the fund is required to result in a particular number of units. Uh, we think that we are in the same place in terms of what we hope to accomplish. Uh, my uh, sincere uh, wish is that through conversations that will continue, hopefully even today, uh, directly between myself and the minister, and our teams have been engaged uh, to identify how we can make sure that the results we both want to see uh, come from the funds. We have a duty to respect the jurisdiction of Quebec. We also have a duty to respect the taxpayers of Canada. Sur le logement, toujours, le premier ministre du Québec nous dit sur le logement que d'abolir la taxe de vente du Québec, ben... Répétez, taxe de... La taxe de vente, la... Like the, like the GST, but the provincial one. Uh, okay, 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 merci. So, yeah, merci. to uh, remove this from uh, construction materials would be too much, too much costly. Uh, what are you making of that in French, ideally? Okay, uh, <laughs> je vais essayer. Mais, uh, 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 J'espère que uh, vous êtes d'accord si je, je oui. fais des erreurs. Uh, mais uh, c'est important pour moi pour util, uh, utiliser l'outil fédéral pour uh, augmenter le nombre de, de maisons uh, partout uh, dans nos pays, uh, mais aussi pour encourager des autres gouvernements, uh, le, pour les, les cités uh, et, et les, les provinces, uh, pour changer les règles, pour uh, améliorer, améliorer la situation pour uh, des, des compagnies, des personnes qui construisent du logement pour uh, des, des Canadiens. Uh, J'encourage uh, chaque province pour uh, utiliser les, les outils dans leur juridiction aussi, mais c'est une décision pour uh, le Québec. Uh, mais après l'annonce, uh, j'apprécie des efforts pour Colombie-Britannique, uh, Ontario, uh, Terre-Neuve et Labrador. Et, et aussi, uh, je, je pense que des autres provinces uh, et, uh, fait des, des, des mêmes changements uh, uh, suivants. Uh, et uh, c'est une bonne chose. Êtes-vous uh, déçu que M. Legault vous dit non? 
Alors, c'est une décision pour M. Legault, mais il a uh, encouragé chaque province, incluant le Québec, pour utiliser chaque outil pour uh, construire des maisons. Uh, ce n'est pas juste, une, uh, uh, juste des mesures de, de, de réduire le, le, le taux pour le, le, du logement, mais c'est une idée. Alors, c'est la meilleure idée uh, pour les, les outils fédéraux. Uh, il a uh, j'espère uh, chaque province uh, 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 utiliser le, le, le même outil pour uh, augmenter le nombre de maisons pour le Canadien et, et pour le Québec. C'était clair, merci. Should the government be providing more information about why the intelligence is credible in, in their view in the death of Mr. Niger? Uh, one of the things that I think is uh, extremely important, and look, as, a, as an officer of the court and a lawyer before I joined politics, uh, the independence of in investigations uh, is, is paramount. Uh, I don't want to compromise uh, what could be potential uh, and, and active homicide investigations. Uh, it's important if we believe in justice that we believe in the process that gets us there. I'm sure there are good reasons uh, not to uh, share uh, details that may uh, ground uh, such uh, extraordinary allegations uh, because protecting the process uh, of getting to a just result uh, is extremely important if we're going to trust uh, the, the result we have to trust the process. What do you make of the formation of the new Canadian federal political party that says it wants to be more centrist than either you guys or the Conservatives? Uh, look, I, I think uh, from my perspective coming from Nova Scotia, I'm reminded of the comments of Premier Houston during his last electoral campaign where he said uh, the progressive conservatives are not the Conservative Party of Canada. He said they were a different party with different values, with different members. Uh, the reality is I think they're speaking to a need that um, there are people who traditionally identified themselves as conservatives uh, who don't identify with a further right-wing version that we've seen after the reform branch of the party has taken over the Conservative Party of Canada. Uh, my sense is they're speaking to a, a void in the political marketplace for conservatives uh, who don't feel at home with some of the further right-wing aspects of uh, Mr. Pauly. They, 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 they also say they're speaking to liberals. They also say they're speaking to liberals who feel Okay, je, je, je vais essayer en français. Alors, je, je pense que le, le nouveau parti, le, le centre-right conservatives, a, a, a juste a, a cherche des, des opportunités a, dans les, les, a, a, avec des conservateurs a, 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 au, au Canada, a, parce qu'il y a beaucoup de personnes qui, a, a, dans les, les, les partis traditionnels, les, les, conserva les conservateurs progressifs, uh, uh, qui ne veut pas les, les mêmes priorités. Et juste par exemple, le, le, le Premier ministre de Nouvelle-Écosse dans la dernière campagne électorale le, a dit que ce n'est pas les mêmes uh, partis, ce n'est pas uh, une partie qui protège les le, le mêmes uh, 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 enjeux, les mêmes uh, values. Uh, et uh, uh, c'est une opportunité, uh, je pense, pour, pour un uh, nouveau parti pour uh, uh, chercher des opportunités pour, uh, avec des personnes qui ne, qui ne voient pas uh, une opportunité pour, pour, uh, pour ils. Uh, dans le euh, secteur de parti et, et, et uh, uh, far right, uh, je cherchais des bons. Bon. Uh, ok, ok. Uh, ma, ma, uh, mais c'est difficile. Uh, mais mais uh, maintenant, la priorité pour moi est pour chercher des opportunités pour, pour soutenir des personnes qui habitent ma circonscription, qui habitent la région atlantique et pour avancer des politiques pour construire des logements. Uh, I think if I focus on uh, priorities that are not unique to one part of the political spectrum, uh, we're going to be able to continue to earn the support of Canadians regardless of their traditional But this group party. also says they're speaking for Liberals, disaffected Liberals that they feel that the current iteration of the party and the government has gone too progressive and too to the left. So what do you say to, to this? Because that's who this group says they're also speaking to. Uh, my, my sense is that a party called the Centrized Conservatives are it's not... Centrized Canadians, actually. Well, okay. Well, they, they, they've clearly uh, uh, come from a, a conservative tradition. They're trying to tap in, from my assessment, to the former uh, progressive conservative branch of the party. Uh, one of the things that I really enjoy about Canada, regardless of your political uh, perspective, uh, you're entitled to freedom of uh, uh, association. You're entitled to organize. You're entitled to attract support. Uh, but regardless of what the political spectrum may look like, regardless of which parties may emerge uh, or may go up and down in any given electoral cycle, uh, our job is not to defend the uh, interest or perspective of our party. It's to defend the interests and perspective of Canadians. If we continue to focus on policies that will actually improve the quality of life that Canadians get to enjoy, I have faith we'll continue to earn their support and have an opportunity to govern beyond the next election. Okay, but I should go and late for uh, the, uh, my, my conference meeting here. You're not afraid at all? Uh, fear is not mo what motivates me to do my job. Uh, I, I'm uh, afraid for the well-being of my family. I'm afraid for the well-being of my community. Uh, I'm not afraid of uh, political opponents. Uh, I'm excited by the opportunity to help people. That's why I do this job every day. Thank you. The yes. last ball, okay. The uh, Indians put out that yep. said people can should that Canada might not be safe.
because of anti-India activities at the moment? Um, I think everyone knows Canada is a safe country, and given the events of the last two or three days and the seriousness of the allegations, it's important for everyone to stay calm. Uh, Canada, by any standard, is uh, one of the safest, if not the safest, country in the world that is governed by the rule of law. So um, I think people should read that statement for what it is. Uh, le Canada est-il sécuritaire pour les ressortissants indiens? Commençons avec ça. Non, oui, absolument. Et, et, et comme le premier ministre l'a dit, le Canada est un État de droit, euh, un des États les plus sécuritaires, les plus sûrs au monde. Alors, euh, on va prendre l'énoncé pour ce qu'il vaut. Euh, mais c'est clair pour quiconque qui regarde le Canada par rapport à tous les États et tous les pays au monde qui ont des annotations. Ce qui est clair en même temps, c'est que le Premier ministre, vu les circonstances des derniers trois jours, a demandé au calme, et c'est ce qu'on fait aussi. Right now, what they were focused on is making sure that uh, we get cooperation from India regarding uh, uh, the investigation of murder of uh, Hardeep Singh. Do you think it's safe for people to travel to India right now? Yes, travel advisory, what do you make of it? They're urging the up, uh, its citizens take the utmost caution here in Canada. Well, listen, it's all about protecting people. And so these advisories, we lend ourselves to the advisories and, and follow that uh, advice. But we right. just want to so ensure in, people are safe. Yeah. citizens not to come to Canada. So we're, we're, we're the danger. Okay, I haven't danger. seen the travel advisory <laughs> yet, so I'll give, provide you with a comment once I do. Do you have, how much confidence do you have in the intelligence uh, on the India file. Mm. I have confidence. This is what we rely on. These are the experts that uh, are working very hard to ensure that we're kept safe. And uh, they have the expertise, and we need to rely on them. Well, Thank you. Mr. Thanks. Colley, we'd like to see more of that intelligence. Do Canadians need to see more of the evidence to make informed judgments? What do you make of uh, India saying that Canadian and Indian citizens shouldn't come here anymore? It's issued a travel advisory saying Canada is unsafe because of anti-India activity. I think everyone should be and is safe in Canada. This is, this is the important thing, Indian as anyone else. Thank you. Uh, India has issued a travel advisory against Canada, awesome. urging its citizens not to come here, saying that there is uh, growing anti-India activities. What do you make of that? Well, I have a, a large uh, Indian and South Asian community in my riding, so um, my job is to reassure them that uh, Canada continues to be a safe place for travel and uh, that their families are, are more than welcome here. And uh, as the ministers on this file have, uh, have also urged, I, uh, I want to urge calm because uh, it's, it's time to come together, not to let this drive a wedge between us. Thanks. Why do you say that? Oh, because well, it's so obviously, I think, untrue. Should Canada be also issuing it, uh, escalating its travel price really? I wouldn't have thought so. I don't, I don't know what the situation is in India, but I'd be surprised if it's become that inflamed. Are you satisfied with the amount of information that you and caucus have received about this, this, this alleged um, targeting of a I, I can't say I've availed myself to all the been offered, so I can't really comment. Mr. McGinn, what do you think about India's travel advisory today? Um, well, I, I think it's untrue, so that's what I have to say about that. India has issued a travel advisory for its citizens to come to Canada, saying that you know, there's risk of anti-Indian activities. What do you think about that? 
Well, the, the Indian government can do what they want, but essentially uh, um, there's a lot of uh, individuals here, like even in Northern Ontario, Sudbury, uh, the students, uh, they, are, they, are, they are concerned. They are concerned with the Indian government, they are concerned with uh, what's going on, and, and I think uh, we as Canadians, we have to stand together with them. Canada do the same for citizens, for Canadian citizens in India? Uh, I think at this point we gotta we gotta go through the process. We got the court process. We gotta go through the, the those elements here. But we gotta find ways to make sure that the Canadians and the students here are safe here. Is there the information the Prime Minister has disclosed about these allegations? Are you satisfied with the evidence? Well, there, I mean, we, in Canada we have the rule of law. We got the court system. We gotta follow through with with the courts, and and we we definitely have to go through the. Je pense que c'est important de, de faire quand même les avertissements. Puis euh, il y a quand même beaucoup des étudiants ici dans, dans, dans la région qui non, sont inquiets. L'Inde a publié des avertissements à ses propres voyageurs. Okay? Est-ce que les ressortissants indiens sont en sécurité au Canada? Ben, écoutez, euh, ça fait déjà plusieurs années que, que les étudiants ici sont quand même inquiets de, du, euh, du, euh, du gouvernement, de l'Inde, des activités qu'ils font. Alors je pense que c'est faut que les étudiants soient vigilants. Puis en tant que Canadien, il faut quand même les supporter ici localement. Sur un autre sujet, là, 161 millions de dollars pour le nouveau passeport, euh, est-ce que c'est de l'argent bien dépensé? Oui, écoutez, il y a un processus à suivre pour le renouvellement des passeports. On regarde ça, c'est un processus qui, euh, qui est bureaucratique et on peut regarder euh, à l'évaluer. Alors, je pense que faut aussi... En tant que Canada, on est un pays fier, on a beaucoup de choses à partager, alors je pense que c'est important. Mais c'est quand, quand même... C'est quand même 200 quelques millions de dollars juste pour refaire... Je ne parle pas des mesures de sécurité, les puces. Vous trouvez-vous ça exagéré? Mais disons... Il y a quand même des difficultés importantes. Il y a des nouvelles réalités aujourd'hui avec le système de passeport, avec la sécurité. Alors, non, non, on parle des images. Juste les images, ça a coûté 200 oui, quelques millions. Oui, mais c'est tout... Euh, il y a quand même euh, peut-être des chiffres qui sont un peu, euh, un peu exagérés. Là, mais je pense que... Ben, c'est quand même des chiffres de votre gouvernement. Ça a été ouais, écoutez, il y a quand même... Oui, il y a des chiffres qui, qui regardent tout l'ensemble. Alors, il y a des éléments importants. Alors, je pense que c'est quelque chose qu'on doit faire au niveau de la sécurité. Pour regarder pour le futur, pour euh, sécuriser les passeports, parce qu'il y a beaucoup de fraudes. On nous annonce un nouveau parti de centre-droit. Est-ce que ça vous inquiète? Est-ce est que vous aimeriez vous y joindre? <rire> non, je suis bien, je suis bien fier d'être libéral. Je veux continuer le travail que je fais présentement. Alors, avec les ressources naturelles, avec les langues difficiles, on est mes commettants. C'est how important it is to be involved in our children's lives. I've got a 19-year-old, I've got a 12-year-old, I'm very much involved in their lives. But what I would say is, not at the expense of the safety of kids. And that's what we're talking about here. And I say this from an empathetic level. I understand what it means to be a parent, a mom, I am one. But we're talking about the safety and well-being of kids. And I am the Minister of Women and Gender Equality and Youth. It's Gender Equality Week. And that means the safety and protection of all genders, all people, no matter the age. Why do you think that this is gaining traction? Polls show a lot of people favor things like parental rights. And why do you think that this movement, if that's what we're calling it, is gaining traction among Canadians? We've seen the level of hate. You've reported on it. I don't need to tell you what is happening with regards to the trans and queer community, the 2SLGBTQI plus community. Um, it was just a couple of months ago that I was before a lot of you making an announcement because the community had come to us, meaning the government, saying we don't feel safe to celebrate pride. Small areas of this country, rural areas of this country had to, for the first time, employ security and they needed help to cover those costs. And we moved quickly to do that. That level of hate hasn't dissipated. It has risen, we know it has, and it's about protecting the most vulnerable. As I said, I understand what it means to be a parent, I am one, 
but I also understand what young people, I'm the Minister of Youth as well, um, I travel across this country and I hear when they say they don't feel safe. I would also say that this is something that, that isn't to be politicized. This should never be about political ambition and dividing people. This is an issue where we've got to come together because kids' lives, and I've said it before, are very much at stake. So what is your government going to do? Do you see a couple more challenges? Is there something you The government is already doing, and I mentioned the emergency funding. I'm watching those court challenges very, very closely, and I'm not leaving, we're not leaving anything off the table. But to say that the government hasn't done anything isn't accurate. We have. We have and continue to. And I'm standing... Do you see the intervener status in these lower courts an option on the table? Nothing, nothing is off the table right now. And as I said, we are, we are, we are watching, we are watching everything. We are watching, and I'm being very clear. We're watching things clearly, but here's what I do absolutely reject, is that our government hasn't done anything. I would put on the table that there is no government that has done more. There's actually a ministry now called Women and Gender Equality, All Genders, and Youth. There is an action plan that we put forward that's working. I'm meeting with grassroots organizations across this country, including educators, including parents, and including the trans and queer kids that should be centered here. We have, we have made um, every effort to put the community first. This is not a top-down approach, it's a bottom-up approach. And that's what our action plan was. Please tell us what you need. Tell us how we can be there. And that's why the money from that plan grows to grassroots organizations that are on the ground, that are dealing with this every single day. I have said time and time again, I'm an ally. We're allies. This is not my life experience, but it is very much my job to, to stand in support and help in any way. Uh, right now, right now, what I would say is that rural and and Atlantic Canadian MPs have been very, very clear in their concerns on affordability, and it's being sounded out. So we'll see where it goes. Just about the protests outside, are you worried because it's quite intense across cities in Canada, pro LGBTQ again people who are against it. Are you worried about the polarization of this debate in the country? Always worried about the polarization of the debate. Is your party contribu contributing to it? Doing everything that we can not to contribute to it, but at the same time to be vigilant about the rights that have been won for people in this country. And I commend, you know, those who, who feel strongly about it and, uh, you know, who are, who are protesting in turn. Um, but to be honest, I've been cooped up in here all day, and I haven't seen really what's going on outside or anywhere across the country. On, on, just on uh, surgeries, because uh, the Conservative Party at their convention, they uh, voted for, um, uh, sorry, I, I'm forgetting the term, but yeah, basically they want to prevent surgeries for you know people who are under 18. What do you think of this resolution being adopted by the Conservative Party? I just Party? think I really don't want, this is such a, an incredibly vulnerable population and having it bandied around uh, like a political football doesn't do anybody any favors and it certainly doesn't do them any favors. But is I your think party it's, clear about like they're, that they're in favor of those surgeries? Well I'm, well, I'm telling you right now that like I really, you know, the issue, I do not want to contribute to a debate that can make some people who are already vulnerable increasingly more vulnerable. This is, this to me is a personal, not a political issue. Status in court battles on this issue in New Brunswick, for example. I'm I'm unclear, and I'm not the attorney general, and I don't know if that's the role. I I don't know, but I do know I'm very careful on this issue because I'm vigilant and I believe very strongly in it. Just one more thing. personally for you, seeing what's going on outside. How, how do you how do you feel? The last time I was outside, I was standing with you, and that was for about you know six seconds, and, and noted the number of people who were there. I don't know. All I would say, I'm heartened by the vigilance that so many Canadians feel. You know, I'm heartened by that. I'm heartened by people who come out and will continue to fight for rights. Because I can tell you as somebody who has attained those rights in his own lifetime, when you have attained rights in your own lifetime, you know that they can be taken too. And that they, that they can be hurt, that they can be diminished. And I think increasingly a number of other Canadians know that too. 
stance on these issues? Like, should you take a, a clearer stance, like the Liberal Party, you know, for instance, in favor of defending, you know, you know, for instance, surgeries? I think we are very clear that we support people who are so vulnerable and continue to be vulnerable. Yeah, we have to look at it. And then I've said, look, you know, when, when this came up before with, with Premier Higgs, um, you know, some homes aren't safe. Some homes aren't safe. You know, some kids need to be able to confide um, with their teachers and with support systems that exist at their schools because they aren't safe at home. I wish that weren't the case. I wish the world was perfect. But it's not. And, and so we have to protect those places where, where, you know, where people feel that they can confide and get, and get well. Anyway, I don't want to dig too much more into it because I don't know what's happening outside. Where your party stands on the surgery issues for minor, like, are you guys in favor of it, against it? Can you just clarify that? I would look. Well, well, the party membership was, but to be, you know, not necessarily the party. I would really rather not discuss it until I have a more fulsome idea of, of what's going on. But I really, really don't want this to be bandied around as a political football any more than I need it to be. These are deeply, deeply personal questions for people who are already incredibly vulnerable, and I don't want to add more harm or, or more fuel to the fire. Bon, écoutez, le nouveau passeport, là, 200 quelques millions de dollars pour les nouveaux dessins, là, est-ce que c'est de l'argent bien dépensé? Ben, écoutez, l'objectif premier, c'est de rendre le passeport sécuritaire. On sait que c'est un outil absolument essentiel pour voyager de manière sécuritaire à travers le monde, pour que la citoyenneté que l'on a soit reconnue, peu importe qu'on on aille sur la planète. Alors, c'est un investissement important pour être sûr qu'avec les nouvelles menaces que l'on voit un peu partout sur la planète, les gens soient protégés. Mais là, vous savez qu'on parle uniquement des dessins, pas de la sécurité. C'est très clairement indiqué dans les documents de votre gouvernement. Il faudra voir exactement quelle contribution amène à quel montant. L'objectif principal de la révision du passeport, c'est effectivement se mettre aux normes 2023, reconnaître qu'en 2023, travailler et voyager sur la planète importe, implique certains risques et que l'usage d'un bon passeport réduit ces risques. Can you tell me that in English, like uh, the two uh, million dollars for the new passport? <laughs> One of the most important objectives of the revision, the renewal of the passport is to protect the safety of Canadians when they need or they want to travel across the world. We know that there are a number of threats now in Canada and outside of Canada that didn't exist years ago. So when people will travel with a new passport, their security will be enhanced and their ability to travel freely and without hurdle will also be increased. Sur un autre sujet, là, vous avez vu, il y a un nouveau parti conservateur qui va vraisemblablement naître aujourd'hui. Qu'est-ce que vous en pensez? Est-ce que vous aimeriez vous y joindre? Non, mais moi, je suis assez focalisé sur les choses qu'on va faire pour les, les Canadiens ici au gouvernement euh, du Canada. On sait que c'est compliqué pour les gens euh, en 2023. Le coût de la vie augmente, beaucoup de, de stress pour voir ce qui se passe euh, sur la planète avec la Chine, avec l'Inde, les catastrophes naturelles qui nous, euh, qui nous arrivent depuis plusieurs mois. Donc c'est difficile et nous on pense avoir la bonne, valeur, la bonne vision et les bonnes valeurs. Un parti plus centriste que ce que M. Poilievre offre, ce que vous en pensez? <rire> Bon, effectivement, M. Poilievre n'est pas vraiment au centre. Là. Il, il s'inspire beaucoup de la droite radicale américaine. On sait ce qu'il fait là, sur les médias sociaux. Le sujet est plus On veut remettre légal à nouveau les armes d'assaut, donc des choses comme ça qui sont, je pense, d'un autre monde et d'une autre époque. Donc, nous, on focalise sur les choses qui sont importantes pour les Canadiens, c'est-à-dire reconnaître le, les enjeux du, du coût de la vie et l'importance de travailler pour aider tout le monde à se Merci beaucoup. Merci à vous. Qui trouve que ça, coûte trop, ça a coûté trop cher faire le redesign du passeport, 274 millions de dollars, juste pour les, les illustrations. On ne parle même pas des mesures de sécurité. Ben écoutez, ce qui, ce qui était recherché, c'était un passeport qui était très sécuritaire pour le détail. Vous demanderez au ministre responsable de ça, mais. Oui, mais juste, là, c'est juste pour les dessins. L'objectif, c'est d'être à point, une pointe de la technologie, d'avoir un passeport euh, qui, euh, qui est très sécuritaire. Non, mais des dessins, là, 200 quelques millions, là. Bon. Combien d'arbres vont être plantés avec ça? Nous, nous, a, nous avons promis de, de planter les 2, 2 milliards d'arbres et nous sommes on track de, de faire ça. Mais c'est pas ça ma question. Les fonds qui ont été alloués pour les 2 milliards d'arbres, l'argent, les 3, pas quelque chose de milliards, là. combien d'arbres ça va planter? Bon. Comme j'ai dit, nous avons un plan pour planter 2 milliards d'arbres et, et bien sûr, il y a quelques programmes dans le gouvernement qui plantent des arbres. 
qui compte sur le cible de 2000 dollars. Mais nous avons promis et nous allons faire euh, 2000 dollars. Mais répondez à ma question, là. Les fonds spécifiquement au programme de votre ministère, combien d'arbres ça va planter? Bien sûr, c'est presque tous les 2 milliards d'arbres, mais il y a quelques autres programmes, comme le, le, le faible émission qui existe dans le, 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 le département de l'environnement, qui compte aussi, mais euh, bien sûr, le, le, le plus bas, c'est... C'est 49 le, des arbres des deux premières années, quand probablement même. probablement, c'est 90 ou quelque chose comme ça, c'est presque... Donc, presque 90 Vous ne trouvez pas que c'est trompeur d'avoir présenté ça ici aux Canadiens? Oui, nous avons dit ça à la commencement de ce programme. C est, c est, c est, rien n'a changé. Ça va coûter... Rien du tout. Ça va coûter plus de 250 millions qui sont dessinés de nouveaux passeports. Les dessins du nouveau passeport, 250 millions. C'est -ce de l'argent bien dépensé, selon vous? Le nouveau passeport, vous savez, la vérité. C'est pas mon ministère, il y a un ministère qui, qui est responsable pour okay. le Actually, we have moved forward quite decisively on this, and, and, and you have not changed the National Defense Act to not get the military jurisdiction. And, and we know there's work to do to institutionalize the changes that have already been put in place. All of those cases are, are, are now proceeding towards uh, the, the civilian investigation and criminal justice system. Uh, we know that there are legislative changes. We're doing that work, and we'll bring it forward at the first opportunity. Can you talk about the technical issue for the plane, sir? What are you waiting for to change the law? Because cases, there's at least one case that has been stayed now, and they blame you for not for failing victims of sexual assault for not stripping the military of its jurisdiction. Well, and, and we are doing that work, but there were 48 recommendations within that recommendation. We also have the benefit of the Fish Report, and, and we are working very uh, closely uh, with the, uh, the external monitor and in consultation with, uh, with Ms. Arbor to make sure that we bring about all the legislative changes um, in a comprehensive way and at the same time we do. I, I want to acknowledge and recognize the urgency of that work and, and we're absolutely committed to getting it done as quickly as possible but we're going to also do it right. What, what else can you say? What do you think of the case being stayed, because, including because there was time the time it took in the military's judicial system for it to be transferred to the civilian. Is that acceptable? Well, actually, I, listen, I want to express why I've, I've been involved in many, many of these investigations, and I know how incredibly challenging it can be for the victims of, of sexual assault as these matters proceed through both the, the military justice system or the criminal justice system. Um, it is not acceptable, and that's why we're making these changes and, and facilitating it. Um, we will also have a responsibility, and we'll do everything possible to support people that have gone through this. The, the, the trauma of that, um, we are making the changes that are necessary. Uh, we've put those pr processes in place. We're now going to institutionalize them through legislative change. Has sabotage been ruled out in the technical issue in Canada's plane on its trip to India? Uh, there are that that I'm not going to comment on that. There are uh, there are obviously ongoing concerns. I am also focused on replacing those planes because we, we we've already made that step. We've, we've but you're not commenting on if there's any potential sabotage no, that put on. left the left the plane on that runway. I don't want to. I've got to run, run Sorry, off to something, I but I, I want to. Yeah, I, I want to understand questions. what you're waiting for. Why you've got a committee studying changing the National Defense Act when you could stand in the House any day and just add. Sexual offense to Section 70 as a subparagraph. Why, why bring, wait? Bringing forward the legislative changes that are necessary to respond appropriately to the Arbor recommendations is my first priority. We're working with our defense committee, we're working with the military, and we're working um, with the, the, uh, the external monitor to make sure that we do that right. We, we, we understand the urgency of that work. We are absolutely committed to doing it, and we're absolutely committed to doing it right, and we, we're going to proceed. So what happens to the plane? What happens to the plane? Can you rule out the sabotage? What's that? Can you, can you categorically say there was no sabotage? Uh, what I can do is not comment on that at the present. Why not? Thank Why you. not? Do you think about the upcoming visit by President Zelensky? What are you looking forward yes, to hear from him? You know, look, look I, won't, I won't comment on, on, on that. What I will say, though, is that um, Canada's been a leading country in supporting the Ukrainian people. That this is a fight not just about democracy and freedom and Ukraine sovereignty, but Ukrainians are fighting for us. Um, when we look at global inflation, food and energy, the primary cause of that is the war in Ukraine and Russia's blockade of food exports. When we, look at the threat to our, when, we look at, when we look at the threat to ours, this is a big major threat to Canada's security. And so, yes, it's important that we support Ukraine because they deserve that support to defend themselves and their people. 
from Russia's genocidal war, but it's also important that we remember that this is a fight about Canada and inflation and our security, and, and Canada will keep supporting the Ukrainian people. Will you be offering something new to Ukraine? I can't speak to that. That's for that's do, for, the, that's for the Prime Minister or others, do? too. Is I'm constantly advocating for the support that Ukraine needs to make sure that they decisively win this war. Is Canada providing enough right now, do you think, to Ukraine? I think that Canada's, like I said, Canada's a leading country in supporting Ukraine. Is, and I think, is that enough? I think it'll be enough when Ukraine wins this war. So you, you want more from Canada? I, like I said, I'm constantly advocating for Canada to provide the support that's needed to ensure Ukraine wins. We've been a leading country. We've provided tremendous amounts of support. And I'll continue to advocate to make sure we do what's necessary, along with our coalition partners, the United States, the Europeans, and others, to make sure that Ukraine Ukraine is successful in winning the war. Thank you. Thank you. Can we, can we, can we come over here? The first thing is, well, where do you want me to be? Here, what? You. It's always good to look at you, by the way. Well, I mean, the, the first thing of any state, it's not just Canada, the first thing is about uh, ensuring the health and safety of Canadians and national security comes first. So that that's how you need to look at that. But then after that, um, you know, uh, it's for the Minister of Public Safety, Minister Jolie, to define, you know, what would be the next step. But I would think when you look at that, it's always the health and safety of Canadians first. So, so the manifestations of the... J'ai pas vu. Non, non, je sais, mais okay. c'est quand même, il y en a partout à travers le okay, pays, c'est quand même intense. Est-ce que ça vous inquiète, la polarisation de ce débat au Canada? Ben, je pense que c'est pas, c'est pas juste moi, mais je pense que dans une société démocratique, quand on voit la polarisation, vous savez, on a vu ce que ça a fait dans certains pays, alors je pense qu'on doit toujours garder un œil là-dessus, parce que Euh, dans une société démocratique, on veut que les, les gens s'expriment d'une chose, mais c'est vrai que la polarisation, et puis on a vu des gens qui alimentent cette polarisation-là. Comme qui? Ben, écoutez, vous le savez comme moi, alors moi ce qui m'inquiète, c'est, c'est, c'est plus ces gens-là qui alimentent la polarisation alors qu'on doit travailler ensemble pour régler ces enjeux. Est-ce que vous faites des Has India threatened economic sanctions? 